story, so let's just hear him out. <laughs> They're calling it the end of an era. Hundreds <laughs> gathering at the old Hooters for a candlelight vigil. It's a lot of memories going down with that building. But through the tears... Hi guys! Former Hooters employees coming together for one last reunion. I started out as just, you know, coming in to get a job, and it became so much more because I met so many lifelong friends and my co workers. I want to thank each and every one of you. West Virginia's last Hooters in Kanaw City never reopened after March 2020. For all the uh, naysayers, the doubters, the down talkers, and whatnot, this building right here was a legitimate, iconic figure to the Kanawha Valley. <laughs> The vigil began as a joke between friends gaining traction on social media and the attention of international news outlets. Long live Hooters. The building will be torn down Monday and replaced with a popular gas station chain. Crowds celebrating. Those wings look terrible. Terrible. Decades terrible. of memories. <laughs> Co-organizer Leo Browning says Hooters Corporate found out about the vigil and overnighted them a box of calendars <laughs> to give to people. Browning announcing during the vigil they need real help. All right, so this guy co-opted it for his own his own uh, fundraiser there. But as you can see, I scoured the internet. This was like a party, a Gen Z meme event. The the Hooters closed four years ago it's just the building that's going down now and they said people from north carolina drove to be there obviously these kids were screaming and everything but it's absolutely crazy and not something i think that could happen in many other state in any other state she says yes this is west virginia why wouldn't we have a candlelight vigil for our hundred uh for our hoots being demolished Hooters, give us another one. The crying and then the Hooters girls embracing each other. This is absolutely wild. Is this indicative of the time you spent in West Virginia? <laughs> I'm just wondering why they closed it down if it's so popular. It sounds like, it, sounds like it was crushing when it was open a couple years ago. Um, I, I lived in Morgantown, which wasn't there, so I can't really speak on that place. But listening to their accents and watching them like, hang out, that definitely, definitely brings back some memories. But... Uh, yeah, Hooters, you know, people people definitely like Hooters if you put it in the right area. I think that's pretty funny. I, I don't know why they closed it, though, but I a lot of drinking in West Virginia. It's like the number mm. one party school. Dude, I, I had to, like, escape there, but I ended up going back after I dropped out just to live for two years, which in hindsight was probably a mistake. But um, a lot of good people there, a lot of friends, but that, that school – Dude, it's just like turn up city. Like I didn't even know like how to get to class. Like not only did I not go to class, like, I got I don't even there were certain classes I had. I don't even know where they were. It's like <laughs> or, like walk 20 minutes and take this thing to here. And I'm like, wait, I gotta take a freaking like tram to, to the class. I'm not going there. You know, I kind of always had an attitude. It's like, oh, you gotta say this. Like, I don't wanna like I didn't even like being told to go to class. So yeah, long story short, I did not uh graduate. <laughs> You know, I dropped out my third year. Um, I, I was rapping on YouTube, trying to make a name for myself nationally, and it started going well. I started getting label meetings, and I was like, all right, deuces, I'm going to go be a rapper. And everyone's like, this kid's a loser. <laughs> but, dude, c country roads, mountaineers, good time. Whenever I hear Hooters, I always think of this clip from the show The Undercover Boss. You know, where the boss goes and works with a company and sees how it really operates without them knowing that he's the owner or the CEO or whatever. And I always think of this weird episode of that show where a Hooters manager has like, I don't know if he gets fired, but he definitely gets in trouble. But he has the girls like eat beans off of a plate <laughs> to see who can get like a shift off or something. All right. Okay. If you want to play some games, there's other games you can play. It, it's disheartening. <laughs> The first girl that finishes her plate of beans will go home. You can't. So look how they're all saying like, "No, this isn't funny." And then you got five girls, six girls lined up ready to eat beans. Dude, that's such Can a use your favorite, like game. I know. It's like, who wants to eat a plate full of beans? They're like, nobody is like, who wants to go home? Like everyone. It's like, all right, well, here's the game: eat the beans to go home. It's like, dude, that's. That's wild. Hands. Okay. So, go. 
Oh, get some of that. Come on, girl. This is like. <laughs> this guy's so, like I'm not necessarily gonna rag on a guy usually. This guy looks like a math teacher, bro. He he looks. He's mad the CEO. About it. Oh, he's like. Yeah. He's like. I don't know if he's turned on or he's pissed off. Like he he's hard to I read. Think, I think he's pissed because that's really <laughs> that's really gross behavior. Like you're already running a Hooters. I guess maybe that's. It uh it calls for when you're the job that you're probably gonna be a little bit pervy. Shout out to Hooters. You want to sponsor us? Uh, you go right ahead. Um, I've never been into Hooters. Like, you know, I get the dynamic of it. Like chicks with big titties or something. They work there, but it was never like you know my family. Let me let me let me rephrase. My mom <laughs> is is pretty classy, so like she would never bring us to a Hooters. You know, but like. I don't think my dad ever did bring us to a Hooters, but I could see him doing it. He didn't, but I like that's not out of the realm of possibility. So I just never really went. And then people would be like, "The wings are good," and, and it's like, no. "Are they? Like, are they?" I, mean, I went one time people. in my early twenties, and it was too expensive, and the wings weren't that good. Like, go to a wing place if that's what you want. Maybe it, it probably depends on the location, but like, it, it's not worth it in any stretch of the imagination. Closed also the one that I went to. It's not. It's in like this a, progressive world, come on. It's like a theme bar, right? Where it's like, oh, you just go see hot shakes and you eat. And it's like you watch sports or whatever. Have you ever heard of the one? They're not as popular, but it's like they talk shit to you. Like you go yeah. there, they like treat you. They're like, hey, you piece of shit. They're like, oh, look, at, <laughs> look at your bald dad. Look at your ugly bald daddy. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go there, bro. I got like, I got trauma. Like, dude, I'll, start, I'll start crying. People think I'm tough, dude. You make fun of me too many times. Dude, I'll, I'll cry right there. I won't eat a single thing. I know there's a hot dog stand that does it, that in Chicago, and then there's also a restaurant in Vegas that does that. I believe it's the same place in Vegas where you eat for free if you're over 400 pounds, a buffet. That's, I believe it's that one. They're like, look, hey, they're like, look at Fatty McFree. <laughs> yeah, here, much. Like, badass, like, eat for free. Oh, Fatty, you hungry? You want more? <laughs> and it's just like, dude, that's such a bad policy. Like, I bet there's a few 400 pounders that just be floating around there eating for free quite <laughs> often, you know, getting fat. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> they have a scale on the outside. Um, it's, it's pretty epic. It's very, if you were to be like, explain America to someone who doesn't know anything about <laughs> it, you got to have the buffet eating for free. One I'll, of the, go okay. ahead. Uh, I was going to say like, I'm not shitting on like rural America or West Virginia. I like West Virginia and rural America. I grew up on a farm, but like when people on Instagram, they think of like homesteading life. They're like, oh, I want to be a trad wife. I want to be this. I'm not saying it's not a good plan, but like that's not really what rural America is about. Like some people do live that life, but it's like you got a lot of drugs, got a lot of beer, got a lot of sports watching, got a lot of hooter type activities. Like it's I'm not being rude or anything, but it's like all these like all these like suburban kids who just like want to be rural, you know, cause it's like mm -hmm. trendy now. They're like, I want a wife that churns butter. And it's like, that's cool. But like churning butter is actually hard as shit. Running a farm is hard as shit. And most people in the rural areas, like you're not going to move to these areas. And like all your neighbors are just going to be like living in harmony. It's like, there's going to be a lot of overdoses. And, and if you can find a community that's awesome and like perfect, then that's amazing. But, you know, I think like, that's what people think it's like when they're like, I'm tired of the city. I want to move here. And it's like, <laughs> there's a reason rent's so cheap there. It's like people don't, it's not like a super desirable place to go necessarily. Yeah. I wonder if it's at all similar as to when I was in college, it was very popular for girls to want to be from the country and go to country music festivals and everything. City of like 180,000 people and they are all bragging about who's more country than I know you froze. Sort of stuff. I don't know why we just switched sides. That was interesting. But I think froze. that you froze for like five seconds. It's okay. It's wild. Um, I think uh, trends like that come and go. But some thinking back, I definitely don't think that people would want to act that way these days. It would be t there'd be too much liberal pressure as opposed to like almost ten years ago when the the pre-Trump before everything everybody freaked out. I think there'd be too much pressure these days for college girls to be like, I want to be like country and conservative. I don't think that would, that would be allowed to happen these it, days. They got a lot of like Coachella has another thing called Stagecoach. Like country is getting more popular and like, you know, people do, there are a lot of people who like want to be country or like country music. There's nothing wrong with it. I grew up on line dancing. Like I said, I grew up on a farm. My mom listened to country music. 
I just think it's like when people are like doing the trad thing, they're like, I want to run a farm. It's like, dude, farming is like so hard. And some mm -hmm. people do it like, and I have a lot of respect for them, but it's like, it's kind of like me being like, I want to, you know, I want to be like it. I want to chop trees with an, with an ax. And they're like, do you really want to? And I'm like, no, I just want to wear this lumberjack like flannel and look really cool. You know, like the history <laughs> to wear the lumberjack flannels, mm -hmm. with the beards, but they like, like you like push them and they like fall over <laughs> like the lumberjack. Look, it's, there's two groups. There's like actual lumberjacks and like, and working class men. And then like hipster retards like myself that just like, you know, I'm just kidding. But you know, <laughs> I just like, yeah, they're like, oh, if I go out into the rural areas, it's like, no, you're going to have a candlelight vigil for Hooters. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of dads who like the Steelers, you know, and, and West Virginia University. That's the closest uh, team is like mm -hmm. uh, it, Pittsburgh's the closest city that has like sports teams. So a lot of Penguins fans, hockey fans in, in, in West Virginia, a lot of Steelers fans. Obviously, West Virginia University, number one. <laughs> West Virginia, number one. <laughs> I want to point out another. I don't know why it was Chinese. That's, that's racist towards me and Chinese people. I'm gonna get all my Chinese homies and Asian homies and South Korean homies to like leave a Yelp review on your Yelp. One star, racist. Anything Shane Gillis has said, we're allowed to say now. So I just like to throw that out there. Right. There. That, that is the rule. Turn it up, Jordan.